Well, hello again. From Jens Tobias, author of The Weekend Storage Warrior, Storage Auctions for Fun and Profit. If you want a book to learn how to do storage auctions as a small-time buyer, this is the book for you. It's available on Amazon.com. Well, hello again to another edition of The Weekend Storage Warrior. I just bought a unit. My first unit for a few months. Ta-da! This one, there were very few people at the auction, uh, but I still managed to pay $400 for it. I bought it because it has a Schwinn bicycle with a banana seat. I think that's a Schwinn Stingray. Uh, it's got monkey bars and little tiny wheels. I, those might be the stock wheels, but Schwinn bikes can be very valuable. Um, there's another bicycle up there, and uh, let's have to see how we do here. Okay, so we're home. First thing that I did, as soon as I got home, I started looking up Schwinn bicycles. Turns out, it is a Stingray. Unfortunately, it's a 2004 Stingray. It's got the little small wheel on the front. Here's one that sold for $128. Yesterday I brought my truck to the auction and I brought back uh, about a half a truckload of stuff. Uh, this is the next morning. My storage area here is nice and empty. I haven't bought anything for a long time and uh, I've got plenty of space. Pickup truck. My Schwinn. Okay, we're gonna get going on this. This is the first three boxes that I took off my truck. I hate doing this with one hand. Of course, it's because somebody's paying to keep stuff in storage doesn't mean it actually has resale value. There's some nails, some rubber gloves. Tape shut. That's what we like to see. Uh, adjust that. I seem to have a lot of those. A reciprocating saw from Harbor Freight. And it's a PlayStation 2. Speaker. There's a Nintendo cartridge, Kong. And uh, DVDs. So I'm digging through these boxes out of this first load. Uh, stuff is not that great. There's a few odds and ends. Lots of trash. Tons of trash. There's my little Schwinn. Okay, here we are back at the storage place. I finished unloading that half truck load that I had brought home yesterday. And today I get to finish unloading all this stuff. It's a lot of boxes. Uh, I hope that it's better than the first load. It, the stuff uh, it's a little bit iffy. I mean, seriously, this, this is ridiculous. Uh, this, uh, junk mail. One full truckload of boxes. And it's still not done. It's just trash. The problem is, there's whole boxes in this unit. Lo many of them. They're just all trash. You find one thing, and then you throw 20 things away. Uh, it's, 
just there's so much trash here I can't even get my hands around it DVD and it's raining so I got to do this all inside this is all trash <laughs> okay so we're getting down towards the end those are empty boxes uh, all that's left is clothing I still have to sort through the clothing um, this unit could have been a great unit uh, I figured there were practically almost a hundred boxes in there and they were sealed unfortunately maybe they just decided to put a bunch of stuff in storage that wasn't worth very much um, I think I'll be okay on it they're just out of sheer volume I'm gonna do okay but I'll show you here next to uh, all the good stuff get geared up for action I also recovered some scrap metal out of this unit with some copper fittings, some copper wire, some memory boards. This was kind of an odd unit in that it really didn't have any of the items that someone would be using on a daily basis. There was no furniture, very little kitchen stuff. It seems like it was more just all the random odds and ends like the old toys and uh, papers and uh, that somebody had to deal with because they had to downsize uh, this particular storage company offers the use of a free truck plus help in unloading the boxes so it looks like somebody just said what are we gonna do with all this stuff oh let's put it on boxes and put it in storage and at three hundred dollars a month that dog didn't hunt very long now it's time to tally up the loot uh, this is the big ticket stuff Barbie, these Nintendo games are worth about a hundred. Uh, four gaming systems, a Nintendo DS, a Game Boy, PlayStation 2, and a Nintendo 64. That's 150. My old radio, and my dog and cat. And I got the art. It's kind of hard to put a value on that, but there's some cool old stuff from the 50s. Called a uh, so I call this pile here uh, maybe 300. Uh, this unit did have a little bit of jewelry in it. That's a sterling silver gaming token from Circus Circus, broken chain and a locket. And it had one tiny little piece of uh, gold. That weighs a tenth of a gram. But it's always nice to find gold. All right, let's quickly go over the good stuff. All the trash is gone. I had a $60 dump ticket out of this unit. Uh, I have 24 totes and boxes of stuff that I can sell, plus three toolboxes. Uh, this is all the pictures that's going back to the storage place so the lady gets her pictures back. Um, each of these crates and boxes there's a lot of things that are a dollar, a lot of things that are three, five, ten. Okay, I want to just do a little exercise here to show the power of volume. I'm going to randomly select this tote here, this gray plastic tote, and show what's inside of it. I have 25 totes, so this is just kind of a sample. Okay, so here's what was inside this one tote. Bathroom scale and a box of wrenches with a vice grip. It's a crescent vice grip that's made in China. But still you can see this stuff starts adding up. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So here we are at the old swap meet. It's a busy Saturday morning. Uh, I've been selling off the contents of this last unit little by little. I'm doing this by myself. I've made back all the money that I spent on it and all the costs. This is the profit. My two bikes here. My porcelain figures. Some tools. Uh, lots more tools. Um, random dollar stuff. So it was a lot of work. 
uh, to get this far and uh, when you consider the hours involved it, it probably uh, not very good but hey profit to profit so we'll see how we do here today I got my Swin Repro bike that's actually a 2007 bicycle I'm gonna try to get 125 for it okay, here we are at the end of the day I made hundred and thirty five dollars net profit today there's the money uh, I sold the Schwinn Stingray for 50 bucks. That was a giveaway price, but it was rusty. It was a repro. I didn't want to take it home. But other than that, uh, this unit was just like getting blood out of a stone. None of the art sold. None of the high-end stuff. Just all the dollar, two dollar, five dollar stuff. And considering the amount of time that I have invested in this, uh, it was a very, very paltry return. On top of all that, I got a box of stuff in the back of my truck that's worth about a hundred that I forgot to take out of the truck today. So I squandered the opportunity to sell that. So I'm back from the swap meet. I've got all the stuff unloaded back in the garage. That was actually my fourth trip to the swap meet out of this unit. I've been selling it off a little bit at a time because I'm doing this by myself. I could have had a huge big blowout sale and hired a couple people and done that all in one trip, but <clears throat> my helper is out of commission. So this is the stuff that has not sold. So now this all gets discounted down. The bike that was 45 is 25. The ceramic figures that were 50 or 20, so on and so forth. I'll milk another $100 out of that, maybe 150 I do also have a few other odds and ends in here. Uh, this is the box that didn't make it off the back of the truck. There's a couple of smartphones, a couple of digital cameras, a mag light. <clears throat> I also have four of these gaming systems. Game Boy, PlayStation 2, Xbox 360, and a Toy Story. So this here is another 100, 150. So, so far on this unit I've sold seven hundred and sixteen dollars worth of stuff out of it but it cost me six hundred dollars when you figure in all the expenses so I've only made after all this work a hundred and fourteen dollars uh, that's just ridiculous but I think I can say with confidence that eventually I'll get back approximately four hundred dollars in profit on a unit that I paid $400. That's called a double. Doubles are okay. Uh, this is storage auction business is like playing the lottery. You know, uh, you don't always hit it big, but as long as you're making a profit, you get to keep playing. So that's it for this movie. Thanks for watching from Jens Tobias, author of The Weekend Storage Warrior Storage Auctions for Fun and Profit. That's my book that I wrote. It's available on Amazon.com. Bye-bye.